In this video, I will finish up the woodwork and surface finish of the harp. I'm starting where the last video left off. One of the first things I need to do is remove wood from the frame so the faces will sit flush with the arms. To do this, we have set up a router table to take off about 2.5 to 3 millimeters of wood from each side. We are only removing wood from the location where the face will go. You can see I have avoided routering too close to where the face edge will be. Instead, I will work this edge by hand with a chisel to keep it neat. Once the heavy part is removed, I further refine the edge by sanding. Next, we remove the excess wood from the top of the arm. This wood was left behind to hold a screw earlier and is no longer needed. We take care to leave enough wood for later refinement by hand. I start cleaning this area with a coarse rasp. Later, I move to a finer file. And finally, some sanding too. Now let us work on the interior supports. These are optional. First, the approximate shape is cut from some of the leftover wood. These shapes are refined on the disc sander and the spindle sander. With the shape pieces adjusted, we prepare to glue them in place. I'm using two-part epoxy for this and a couple of clamps. Notice that these pieces are not as thick as the frame and so will not touch the faces. I put a little bit of filler in the epoxy to better help fill any gaps I missed. With the pieces held in place, the epoxy is allowed to cure overnight. Once the epoxy has cured, I work on rounding the shape of the supports and clean up any stray glue. I'm using a round file for this shaping. Once the interior is cleaned up, I can think about adding the faces to the frame. First we have to cut the faces out of some 3mm thick mahogany plywood. The bandsaw makes quick work of this. We have left lots of extra wood around the perimeter for later shaping and refinement. I have a paper template that I test fit to the frame so I can transfer the precise shape to the plywood. Once I know where this edge is that butts up against the arm, I can refine the plywood on the disc sander. I am careful here to make several test fits. This edge needs to be tight. With the edge set, I mark out where the interior face is going to be. This lets me plot out where the eye holes should go so they do not land on the frame. I want the eye holes to be high of center because the string bridge needs room at the bottom. I use a hole saw to make the initial cuts. Then I use a hand jigsaw to cut the sharp corner curved part these holes are later refined with files and some sandpaper. The back face does not have any holes. The earlier pencil marks now let me pre-paint the interior part of the face black without getting paint into any glue areas. I want the interior to be black so the eye holes pop out more visually. I also paint the interior surfaces of the frame black. With everything ready to go, we can begin thinking about gluing the faces onto the harp. Be certain that the face edge makes a tight fit to the frame edge where they meet. I will glue one face on at a time. I start with the back face. 
I apply epoxy glue to both the frame and the face. I also use some filled glue, again to fill in any gaps I may have missed. I use some pinch clamps to temporarily hold things together while I get the plastic ready. I use wrap plastic to keep the clamps and protective wood pieces from accidentally getting glued to the harp surface. Note, I have at least one clamp holding the edge of the plywood flush with the frame wood. Once clamped together, this is allowed to cure overnight. Now you can see how dark the interior is looking. Looks great so far. The same process is now used to apply the front face. Once the front face is on, it will be very difficult to access the interior. This is why things were pre-painted. I am not sealing the interior so that the wood can still breathe. You can see I have extra plywood sticking out beyond the edge of the frame. We will clean that up soon. Right now, it's looking awesome. Look how dark those eyes are. I tape on a thin piece of poster board to protect the faces of the harp for the next steps. Using the disc sander and the spindle sander, the excess plywood is now ground off the frame. This greatly cleans up the edges of the harp. You can see here the edge before and after sanding. Wow, that's just totally awesome. But those sharp corners would be uncomfortable to hold onto while playing, so we will round them off. First I seal the faces of the plywood, as I hope to strengthen it and keep it from splintering. That sealer sure makes the mahogany start to look pretty. Now we will pre-drill for the string holes and hardware. But first we have to mark where these holes will go. I have a paper drawing that matches the shape of the harp, with the string locations drawn out, and the locations for the tuning pins. Using this, I mark the hole locations, only shallowly with a hand drill. I want to finish these holes on a drill press so they go straight into the wood. This is only a preliminary pilot hole. I'm making these holes now so they will be easier to drill later if any of them end up on a curved surface. Ugh, I marred the wood in two spots with the drill press. I'll have to sand that out a bit later. With the holes made, we can move on to the router to round off the edges. I am using a 13mm half round router bit, approximately a half inch. The wood is worked slowly to try to minimize burn marks or marring. Both the inner and outer edges of the arms are worked so everything gets rounded over. You can see here how the edge changes from a sharp corner to nicely rounded. This will be much more comfortable for the player to hold on to. Golly, this looks sweet. Now for some cleanup work by hand. I start cleaning up with a file. I am fixing any bumps or burn marks and evening out the shape in the corners. On the outer curves, I can use an orbital sander to hasten things along. Finally, as always, is the hand sanding. On the heads of the arms, I use a chisel to form and shape the curl notches at the top. These are refined more with a file and later sandpaper. Now we look at finishing out the holes for the hardware. I select drill bits to match the hardware and mark depths with a piece of tape. All the holes are now drilled to match their planned depths and diameters. Super! Let us test fit a string and see if the hole will hold it. The string is pulled through starting from the back. 
the string nut should disappear down into the hole, but still stop the string from going further. Yay! Now let's work on the finish coats for the harp. I'm still using the two-part epoxy for this finish. The first coat goes on heavy. I will make three more heavy coats with sanding in between. Notice the harp is suspended with wires while curing. This way, the harp is not touching any surfaces, and I can coat that entire harp at the same time. When the finish coat is thick enough, I smooth it out with 400 grit sandpaper, and then only apply a thin coat of epoxy. I'm rubbing this coat on with my nitrile gloves only, so it is very thin. If you have any suggestions for my next harp project, please leave me a comment below. I'm looking now for my next project. Final refinement with 400 grit again, and then we can apply one last ultra-thin layer of epoxy. This looks gorgeous. Before waxing the harp, I clean the surface with some rubbing alcohol and a clean rag. This will remove any amine blush or residues from the finish coats. Next, I apply beeswax to the surface. I apply two coats with buffing. And now, my friends, the woodwork is complete. The surface feels smooth to the touch and it is comfortable to hold on to. Coming up in our next episode, we will begin adding the hardware. We will also add the strings, figure out where the bridge goes, fashion the bridge and attach it. Then finally, we can tune the harp and we should hear its voice for the first time. I'm really excited to get there, so stay tuned for our next episode.